Carolyn, and give a pause. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Um, my name is Caroline. I'm an alcoholic. Uh, oh, should I keep going? <laughs> yeah, you can start again. The voice was. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Start over. Yeah. Okay. All right. My name is Caroline. I'm an alcoholic. Um, I'm nervous for this. Uh, you know, I always get nervous when I speak. Um, so if I could just take a moment and say a prayer, um, I just ask God to take away my fear, to help me be honest and useful. Amen. Okay. Do you want to translate? I'm sorry, I can't hear you, Karan. Yeah, you can, you can continue. Oh, you want me to keep going? Okay, all right. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so I'm Caroline. I'm an alcoholic. Um, I have a sobriety date. It's uh, May 5th of 2016. I have a sponsor. Uh, I'm active in the 12 Steps of Alcoholics Anonymous. I'm active in taking other people through the 12 Steps of Alcoholics Anonymous. Um, and I, you know, I always start my shares with those things because none of those things are um, optional for me, right? Like I need a sponsor. Um, oh, I also have a home group. I have a home group. It's a, it's called the firing line group of alcoholics anonymous. Um, we meet here. I'm from Baltimore, Maryland. I'm in the U S and, uh, what it's real. It's really, really an honor, um, to be here with you guys. And this is a really neat thing that we're able to do and, and participate with, with each other. Um, but I have a sponsor, but I have a sobriety date. Um, I'm active. Thank you, Raj. I'm active in uh, the 12 steps and I'm active in, in sponsoring other people. And, you know, none of those things are optional. Like, that's really what I want to say is like my experience here. Um, my experience here, sorry, in Alcoholics Anonymous is, is not by, you know, one of virtue. Um I'm here because I'm a real alcoholic and, and I need to stay sober. And, and my experience is if I, if I have a sponsor, right. And I'm going through the 12 steps and I'm active in a, in a home group, like in a home group of Alcoholics Anonymous, and I'm active in helping other people like that's been the solution um, to keep me sober. Yeah. Okay. I'll take, yeah. So I'm a thriller and I'm here, Carolyn, you know, uh, uh, okay, Alcoholics Anonymous member ni. and uh, program ni, uh, chase to May 5th Rendwera Padhar Ninchi Sober Gaunanu. Na home group or chase firing line home group, Baltimore uh, Pradesh from USLO. So meeting start chase in Mundu, our Kikoncho anxiety than the normal Gauntundi. So our prayer chase Kuni, Devuni uh, Korkuni, Manandarki Sahaya Padera to Unchimani Devun Korkuni uh, meetings uh, Praram Nincheru. So, I would say that the Panindu Sopanalu sponsor, sponsor, the Vanni Tanaki options, Kabu, Tana Chayalsind. If we chase to Napuninchi, Tanaki program chase to Napuninchi, so bright and edi was And Tana happy as Andoshinga on Tundi. So, Ivani, Panindu Sopanalu sponsor pet code on sponsor, keep punch down edi. Avasaran Tanaki. So Avasarani Purti Chase Kuntu, Tana Prete Chase Tuntuno, Tana Sober Gontundi, Santoshan Gontundani, our Chiptuna. Yeah, Carolyn. Thank you. Um, yeah, so I'm not, I'm not here by, uh, by any kind of virtue. Also, I live really close to the fire station. So you're going to hear the you know, <laughs> the fire trucks going by at different times. Uh, so I apologize for that. Um, but yeah, I'm not, I'm not here by any virtue in Alcoholics Anonymous. Um, I'm here because I'm a real deal alcoholic. And so I guess I'll just explain what that means to me and um, share a little bit about, you know, um, what what it was like for me drinking. Uh, so I took my first drink when I was... Um, I was like 14 or 15. I was in high school. Uh, and what I remember about this time in my life is that I was just, I was, ah, I was afraid. I was really afraid. Like all the time. Um, I was just consumed with, um, fear about what you thought about me. And I, 
had these ideas um, about myself that, you know, I don't know if I was, I don't know. I don't know if I was born with them. I don't know if I had experiences that um, created them, but I, I had these ideas about myself that I just wasn't enough. Um, and I knew that I wasn't, you know, pretty enough. I wasn't attractive enough. I wasn't smart enough. I wasn't interesting enough. Um, I wasn't athletic enough. I wasn't creative enough, you know, wasn't clever enough. Like any of the values, um, and the traits that I, that I really, that I valued in other people, I just intuitively knew for me, um, that I didn't have enough of it. And, um, I'm walking around school feeling this way. I'm afraid of everyone and everything. Um, and, uh, I remember finding myself at this party in high school and I'm consumed with the thoughts of not enough. And, um, I'm afraid of everyone there. I can't look anybody in the eye really. And I remember finding something to drink, you know, and, and, uh, I remember having this reaction to alcohol that like my chest, like, like that tightness in my chest, like that fear and like that anxiety that I carried with me, right that tightness in my chest, like it just kind of softened and my shoulders, like my shoulders weren't up so tight anymore. Like they just softened too. And my stomach didn't, like, I didn't feel like sick to my stomach anymore. Like my stomach wasn't in knots, um, from anxiety. I was just all right. And it felt like for the first time, um, I, I could take a deep breath, you know, and, and further, like, my mind for the first time, um, quieted, right. And all of that not enoughness, uh, just got taken away. Um, and what I was left with, like in the absence of all of that fear was really like this authentic version of myself. I was really like, I was just myself, um, in the best way possible. Like I, what I didn't care about you know, what you thought about me. Um, I didn't have to pretend to be, you know, who I thought you wanted me to be. Um, I was just okay with, with being who I was. And, you know, I remember being at that party that night and I, uh, (laughs) there was this guy that I had a crush on. He was one of my brother's friends and I always thought he was great. And, um, I went right over to him and like told him in my drunkenness that like, I had a big crush on him, you know, and it, it wasn't reciprocated, you know? And I remember in my drunkenness, like I was okay with that, right? It's like, these are the things that I could not possibly do um, in my sobriety, but alcohol, like it completely changed me, um, you know, from the inside out uh, to be comfortable in my own skin. Um, I'll, I'll pause there. యా సో ఆవిడ ఏం చెప్తున్నారంటే ఆవిడ మొట్టమొదటిసారి ఏ ఏలోకి రావడానికి ఏదో ధర్మం పాటించడానికి ఏ ఏలోకి రాలేదండి నేను ఏ ఏలోకి ఎందుకు వచ్చాను అని అంటే నేను తాగుబోతు కాబట్టి నేను ఏ ఏలోకి వచ్చాను అండ్ ఏ ప్రోగ్రామ్ చేయాల్సి వచ్చింది అండ్ తాగు నుంచి దూరంగా ఉండాలండి సో నా మొట్టమొదటిసారి నేను ఎప్పుడు మందు దగ్గరికి వెళ్ళాను అని అంటే నా పద్నాలుగు పదిహేను సంవత్సరాలు వయసులో మొట్ట మొదటిసారి నేను మందు ట్రై చేశాను దానికంటే అప్పుడు అప్పుడు వరకు నా జీవితం నాకు గుర్తున్నదంతా ఏంటి అని అంటే చాలా భయంతో ఉండే ఉండేదాన్ని ఆ భయంతో చాలా భయాలు ఉండేవి నేను నాకు సరిపోతానా నాకున్న తెలివి సరిపోతుందా నాకున్న ఇదేమంటారు నేను చూడ్డానికి బాగుంటానా ఇలాంటి చాలా భయాలు ఉండేవి ఆవిడికి వేరే వాళ్ళతో మాట్లాడుతుంటే వేరే వాళ్ళని చూసి ఏదైతే మెచ్చుకుంటుందో వేరే వేరే వాళ్ళు చూసి వేరే వాళ్ళు తెలివి వేరే వాళ్ళ స్కిల్స్ ఏవైతే ఆవిడ ఆమె మెచ్చుకుంటుందో అవన్నీ చూస్తే ఆవిడికి ఆవిడికి ఆవిడలో అలాంటి ఏమీ క్వాలిటీస్ లేవని ఆవిడ చాలా భయంతోనే బ్రతుకుతూ అట్లానే ముందుకెళ్తూ ఉండేది సో ఇట్లా ఉన్నప్పుడు ఒక హై స్కూల్ పార్టీలో ఒక పద్నాలుగు పదిహేను సంవత్సరాల వయసులో మొట్టమొదటిసారి మందు పుచ్చుకున్నారు ఆ మందు ట్రై చేసినప్పుడు ఆవిడలో ఉన్న ఈ గుండ మీద పెద్ద భారం ఉండేది ఎప్పుడు ఆ గుండె మీద ఉన్న భారం అంతా తొలగిపోయింది మందు లోపలికి వెళ్ళేసరికి ఆవిడ బాడీ కూడా కొంచెం ఫ్రీగా అయిపోయి ఎందుకో ఆవిడకి జీవితంలో ఎప్పుడు లేని ప్రశాంతత అప్పుడు పొందారు ఆవిడలో ఉన్న భయాలన్నీ వెళ్ళిపోయినాయి 
ఆ భయాలన్నీ వెళ్ళిపోయినప్పుడు ఆవిడి ఆవిడతో చాలా కంఫర్టబుల్ గా ఉండి సో భయాలు పోయి అక్కడ ఒక అబ్బాయి తనకి ఆవిడ ఇష్టం అయితే వాళ్ళ బ్రదర్ వాళ్ళ వాళ్ళ బ్రదర్ వాళ్ళ ఫ్రెండ్ ఎవరు ఒక అబ్బాయి ఇష్టం అయితే ఆ అబ్బాయి కెళ్ళి చెప్పడం కూడా జరిగింది ఆ అబ్బాయి సరిగ్గా స్పందించకపోయినా కూడా అప్పుడు ఆమె ఓకేగా ఉన్నారు ఎందుకు అని అంటే మందు ఆవిడకి ఇచ్చిన ధైర్యం అది ఆవిడ భయాలన్నీ మర్చిపోయి ఆవిడ ఏం చేస్తున్నారో ఒక గుర్తు లేకుండా వేరే వాళ్ళ దగ్గరికి వెళ్ళి మాట్లాడడం ఇలాంటివన్నీ ఆ ధైర్యం ఇచ్చింది మందు సో అది మందు ఆవిడకి చేసిన ఎఫెక్ట్ అని చెప్తున్నారు యా కార్లు Um, and I drink for the first time and, um, and I feel like I'm all right. You know, it's like that I had this, um, like hamster wheel of a mind that is constantly spinning and constantly thinking about what you're thinking about me. Um, you know, and, and always it's never positive. Like my mind is not the kind of mind to like, it's not trying to, it's not trying to hype me up. Right. And tell me that I'm doing great. Like, it's really just trying to break me down and, Um, and, and it's constantly critical of myself. And I'm constantly thinking that, you know, it tells me things like, oh, you're not even really wanted here. These people invited you out of pity. Um, they wouldn't have invited you if you hadn't had sat with them at lunch today. And that's why you're here. And it's not really because you're wanted. You know, I've got this mind that's constantly tearing me down. And, um, and, and I'm just constantly afraid of everyone all the time. And uh you know, and, and, and I find alcohol right at this party and I'm completely relieved of it. Like, and I'm left with like, like it's only in the absence of all of that fear and all of that chatter in my mind that like my true self is actually able to come through. Like I'm not, I'm not capable on my own power of just like not being afraid. Like I've been trying to do that my whole life and, and alcohol really relieved me of that. Um, it completely relieved me of, of the fear and And I had a beautiful time that night. Like I told you about the guy that I had a crush on and it wasn't reciprocated. And I was just like, you know what? There'll be another one on to the next one. I had, I had a beautiful time. Um, you know, I threw up everywhere all over the party <laughs> and, um, you know, I mean, that was embarrassing, but it's like, frankly, just a price that I'm willing to pay. And, and that's my experience with alcohol is that like, I am willing I am willing to go to any lengths to continue to drink, <laughs> you know, like I, I really am. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's like, and if that's my experience with alcohol, like, and if you relate to that, like, I may just suggest to you and, and share my experience that, um, alcohol for me is really not my problem. Um, it certainly is problematic. Right. And it looks bad. <laughs> it looks really bad on the outside because I do things like drive drunk. Um, I do things I throw up over at parties in public. I, you know, um, end up in situations that I don't want to be in. I disappoint my family. Like, yeah, those are all like, those are bad things. Right. And those are like certainly problems, but like alcohol for me is really not my problem. Um, it's my solution. Right. And it's what I turn to, to save me right from anything like any, uh, it's in my nature, right. As an alcoholic, like to whenever I feel anything uncomfortable is to turn to the drink. Right. So the drink is really not my problem. It's my solution. And it's my solution for living. And it, and it got me through um, a lot of years, you know, got me through high school. It got me through college. Um, and that's about it. <laughs> like it didn't get me much further than that. Um, but it took me it took me places um, because I was able to to be the person that I wanted to be when I was drunk that I couldn't seem to do uh, when I was sober. I'll stop there. సో ఆవిడ చెప్తు ఆవిడ చెప్తుంది ఆ హై స్కూల్ లో జరిగిన ఎక్స్పీరియన్స్ గురించి కొంచెం ఎలాబరేట్ చేశారండి ఏంటంటే అప్పుడు పార్టీకి వెళ్లే వరకు ఆవిడకి ఆ భయాలతోనే పార్టీలోకి వెళ్ళారు వీళ్ళు అసలు నన్ను ఎందుకు పిలిచారు నేను అసలు ఇక్కడికి రావడం కరెక్ట్ వీళ్ళు అసలు ఎందుకు పిలిచారు అనే భయాలతోనే అక్కడికి వెళ్ళారు నేను అక్కడ అందరితో కలిసి మెలిసి ఉండగలుగుతాను ఇట్లా అనే భయాలతోనే పార్టీకి వెళ్ళారు సో ఆ పార్టీకి వెళ్ళినప్పుడు అక్కడ మళ్ళీ మందు తాగినప్పుడు ఈ భయాలన్నీ పోయినాయి అండ్ ఆ అబ్బాయితో వెళ్ళి మాట్లాడడం అదంతా జరిగాక ఆ అబ్బాయి కూడా సరిగ్గా స్పందించిపోయేసరికి ఎక్కడ లేని ధైర్యం వచ్చింది ఈ అబ్బాయి కాకపోతే ఇంకొక అబ్బాయి ఇట్లా అని ఆవిడికి ఆ ధైర్యం వచ్చి అట్లా ముందుకెళ్ళింది ఆ పార్టీలో కూడా ఇంకా కక్కుకున్నారు అన్ని చేశారు చాలా ఇబ్బందికరమైన సిచ్యువేషన్ వచ్చినా కూడా 
ఆవిడ పర్లేదు ఆల్కహాల్ ఉంటే చాలని ఆల్కహాల్ ని తోడుగా పెట్టుకున్నారు జీవితంలో ఇంకెప్పుడు ఏదైనా ప్రాబ్లమ్స్ వచ్చినా ఏదైనా మైండ్ లో అలజడి ఉన్నా ఇంకా ఇమీడియట్ గా ఆల్కహాల్ అనేది మన తాగుడు అనేది ఒక సొల్యూషన్ ఒక పరిష్కారం కింద ఆవిడ తీసుకున్నారు అండ్ ఆల్కహాల్ అనేది ఇంకా ఆవిడకి మందు అనేది ఇంకా ఆవిడకి చాలా విధాలుగా హెల్ప్ చేసింది ఎట్లా అంటే హై స్కూల్ నుంచి హై స్కూల్ లో కూడా మందు బాగా హెల్ప్ చేసింది ముందుకెళ్ళడానికి అండ్ కాలేజ్ లో ఉన్నప్పుడు కూడా మందు హెల్ప్ చేసింది కానీ ఏంటి అని అంటే ఇంకా మందు వల్ల ఆవిడకి జరిగే పరిణామాలు మర్చిపోతూ ఇంకా ఏది చేసినా పర్లేదులే అనే భావనలోకి వచ్చేసారు తాగి బండి నడపడం ఇట్లా చేయడం అండ్ ఎప్పుడు తాగుతూ ఉండడం అండ్ తాగి ఎక్కడ పడితే అక్కడ కక్కుకోవడం చాలా ఇబ్బందికరమైన సిచ్యువేషన్స్ లోకి వెళ్ళడం ఇలాంటివన్నీ చేశారు సో ఆల్కహాల్ ఆ ఎఫెక్ట్ క్రియేట్ చేసింది ఆవిడలో అని ఆవిడ చెప్తున్నారు so if alcohol is really my solution um my experience is that you can't just take it away from me um and expect me to be okay um because i'm not right like alcohol is really what makes me feel all right um and what happened to me uh in my experience with alcoholism is you know i eventually lost the ability to control my drinking um you know alcoholism i am i am not capable of choosing sobriety right like i eventually passed into this phase of my drinking where um i was drunk almost all the time um i i remember taking this drink uh i was hung over and it was in the morning and i thought i'll just have a drink or two or three to uh kind of ease this hangover a little bit and then i won't feel sick so i remember taking that drink and what happened to me um is that i stayed drunk for nine months you know i mean you know this happened i guess i got sober when i was 23 um so i and i took my first drink when i was 14 so i had you know those years as <laughs> good those years of drinking um that i you know it progressively got worse and worse and i really passed into this region where i couldn't control my drinking and then i was drunk um all the time and by this time i just didn't want to be drunk anymore you know i really didn't want to be drinking anymore and and i was waking up and the first thing i would have to do would be go and to go get a drink i i couldn't exist sober and by this time i'm starting to get sick now like i will withdraw if i'm sober um or if i'm you know you know i'll be withdrawing from alcohol and be getting sick um if alcohol's not in my system so i'm i'm physically dependent on it uh and i want to be sober and i'm trying really hard with everything that i have to get sober and to just stop uh and i can't i couldn't seem to do it i could not seem to put i couldn't put hours of sobriety together this is my experience like if it if your drinking didn't look exactly like this like that's okay it doesn't mean that you're not an alcoholic um but i i only have my experience uh and that's that i was i was drunk for a period of about 9 months hardly drawing a sober breath um and really really wanted to be sober um so i want to make clear that like you know alcoholism i i don't relate to someone who says that they choose sobriety because i was trying really hard with everything that i had to choose sobriety and i just didn't have the power right what this is to me um is a lack of power right like our first step is that we're powerless over alcohol right that implies that like i don't decide and i don't choose like when i drink right and when i stop um that's powerlessness uh this isn't like like i can make choices all the time like i can choose where to go to lunch like i can choose what time i get out of bed in the morning like i can choose like who my friends are i can I, there are all kinds of choices that i have i don't have a choice when it comes to alcoholism um and when it comes to to taking a drink um 
yeah i'll stop there so ఇప్పుడు చెప్తుంది ఏంటంటే ఇంకా ఆల్కహాల్ అనేది మందు అనేది ఆవిడకి ప్రతిదానికి ఒక పరిష్కారం లాగా కనిపించింది సో ఆల్కహాల్ అనేది ఒక పరిష్కారంగా మనం ఇంకా చూసేసరికి ఇంకా సోబర్ ఎలా ఉంటామని ఆవిడ ఆవిడ ఆవిడని ప్రశ్నించుకుంటుంది ఇంకా స్లోగా ఇట్లానే ముందుకు సాగుతూ ఇంకా రాత్రి పూత ఫుల్ తాగడం ఇంకా పార్టీలు చేసుకోవడం ఇట్లా తాగి పడిపోవడం తాగి కక్కేయడం ఇలాంటివన్నీ చేస్తున్నా కూడా పొద్దున్న లేచేసరికి భయంకరమైన హ్యాంగ్ ఓవర్ ఉండేది ఆ హ్యాంగ్ ఓవర్ ఉండేసరికి ఇంకా ఆవిడ ఆ హ్యాంగ్ ఓవర్ తగ్గించడానికి మళ్ళీ మందు తాగడం పొద్దున సో ఇట్లాగ కంటిన్యూస్ గా ఇంకా తొమ్మిది నెలల పాటు ఇంకా తాగుతూనే ఉన్నారు ఒక రోజు ఒక ఒక రెండు మూడు గంటలు కూడా ఆవిడ సోబర్ గా ఉన్నది లేదు సో ఇంకా స్లోగా ఆవిడకి ఏమైంది అని అంటే ఒక మందు తాగాలి మందు తాగ మందు ఎంత తాగాలి ఎప్పుడు తాగాలి అనే ఆ శక్తి పో పోగొట్టుకున్నారు ఆవిడ మందు మందు తా మందు ఎప్పుడు తాగాలనే ఆ శక్తి ఆవిడలో పోయింది మిగతా ఇప్పుడు మనం ఫ్రెండ్స్ ఎవరిని కలుస్తాం ఏం తింటాం అనేది మనలో ఆ శక్తి ఉంటుంది మనం ఆ చాయిస్ మనకు ఉంటుంది కానీ స్లోగా ఆల్కహాలిజం ఈ జబ్బు వల్ల ఆవిడ మందు మందుకు బానిస అయిపోయారు సో ఇంకా సోబర్ గా ఉండడం అనేది ఆవిడ చేతిలో కంట్రోల్ లో లేదని ఆవిడ రియలైజ్ అయ్యారు సో ఆవిడ ఇట్లాగా కొనసాగుతున్నప్పుడు చాలా విధాలుగా ఆవిడ సోబర్ గా ఉండ సోబర్ అవ్వాలని ట్రై చేశారు కానీ ఎప్పుడు ఓడిపోతూనే వచ్చారు అండ్ ఇరవై మూడు సంవత్సరాలు అప్పుడు ఆవిడ ఫస్ట్ టైం సోబర్ అయ్యారు సో అప్పటి నుంచి ఇప్పుడు ఆరేళ్ళు ప్రయాణం అయింది ఆవిడకి సోబర్ గా ఉండి సో ఆవిడ రియలైజ్ అయింది ఏంటి అని అంటే ఇదే నేను మందులో మందుకు మందు దగ్గరికి వచ్చేసరికి నేను పూర్తిగా శక్తిహీన రాలని మందు నేను ఎప్పుడు తాగాలి ఎంత తాగాలి అనే దా అనే విచక్షణ శక్తి నాలో లేదు డిసైడ్ చేసే శక్తి నాలో లేదు సో మన మొదటి సోపానం కూడా చెప్పేది అదే మన మందుకి మనం శక్తిహీనులు అని సో ఆవిడ అది చెప్తున్నారు సో సోబర్ అవ్వాలి అని అంటే ఆవిడ స్వతహాగా ఆవిడ చేసే శక్తి లేదు అని ఆవిడ గ్రహించారు um so i had lost the power of choice and whether or not i drank um you know by the time i arrived in alcoholics anonymous i was very clear that once i started drinking i couldn't stop um that was very clear for probably the last like three years of my drinking that once i took a drink i had no idea how many drinks i was going to have or when i was going to stop um and i knew that i knew that before every drink i took <laughs> you know like the, the knowledge of me knowing what happens when i drink has never been enough for someone like me to stay sober um you know i knew that once i started i was going to drink um i knew that once i started i didn't know how many drinks i was going to have um i knew that once i started i didn't know when it was going to end um and my experience is that I'm frankly just willing to take the consequences, right? It's like when I'm that uncomfortable and I'm afraid, right? And I need to drink. Like I'm just like, you know, I hope it's not a long spree, uh, but I'm willing to pay the price. You know, and and I missed a lot of things in my life as a result of of what we know as the phenomenon of craving, that that thing, right? That sets off in my mind that once I take that that first drink, like I need more. um i i missed a lot of events that i wanted to participate in because once i start drinking like there's nothing else that's more important to me than continuing to drink and like i said like it's not this isn't a choice um you know in our book it's described as an allergy um and i have i have pretty bad physical allergies like I have seasonal allergies <laughs> that are like pretty rough like I'm allergic to everything on the earth which I think is very silly because I think that humans should have evolved away from earthly allergies <laughs> but I'm allergic to um I'm allergic to grass and trees um and mold like I'm really allergic to all that stuff and and if I'm outside and I'm you know sitting on grass um and I'm wearing shorts like my legs will get really itchy um i might break out in a rash right then if i if i touch my eyes and my eyes will be watering and then my nose is stuffy and i feel like i have a like i feel really sick right i feel like i have a cold like that's an abnormal reaction 
um, to grass, <laughs> right? People who aren't allergic to grass just sit on grass and they're fine, right? They're not going to break out in a rash. Um, you know, they're not going to have sniffly eyes or, you know, sniffly nose and runny eyes or whatever. Like they're going to be fine, right? That, I have an abnormal reaction, right? And it's a physical allergy, right? It's a physical allergy. Like it's just nothing to do with my mind, right? I have a, I have a physical allergy to alcohol too, right? And, and an allergy is just an abnormal reaction. So like what that means is that my abnormal reaction to alcohol, like once I physically put it in my body, right? This doesn't happen until I physically ingested it. Like I've, you know, I've taken the first drink or the first sip or whatever. What that looks like for me is that once I start, like I just have no idea how many I'm going to have, right? And this phenomenon of craving sets off in my mind that says more right? And it says another one, another one, another one, another one. I need another drink. I need another drink. I need another drink. And I don't stop um, until I run out of it, right? That's, you know, I rarely actually ran out of alcohol because I always, it was always available. Like I could always go get more. I knew where to get out of alcohol. I had to rarely run out, but if I did run out, like that would be one way that I stopped. Most of the time when I stopped drinking, it was because I passed out. Um, my body just had enough and I, I would pass out um, or somebody takes it away. Somebody takes it away from me and like hides it from me. Um, you know, at the end of my drinking, I, I got arrested and was physically removed from alcohol that way. Right. Like I'm not, I wasn't able at the end to like make my own decision of like, this is when I'm going to stop drinking. I had no control over that. Um, and it's a physical allergy, right? Like this is physical. This is an abnormal reaction that once I start, I need more. Right. So I would never like in my experience with my other allergies, right, sit on grass, right, and then just be like, oh, Caroline, just try really hard um, to not get itchy, right? Like I'm allergic to it. Like I'm going to get itchy, right? So this idea of like, oh, once I start drinking and I'll just try really hard to only have a couple, like it's the same concept, right? It's a physical reaction, Um you know, and if that was the extent of what I suffered from, then the solution would be to just not drink, right? Like if I, uh, if my problem is once I start, I can't stop, then the solution would be like, then just don't start, right? Like that would make, very, it would be it's very obvious and very simple, right? And that's really where the problem begins for me. I'll stop there. Yeah. So I would chapter in the intente our alcohol problem in the I would explain just now and the anti and ante na man big book look or chapter not to monkey uh okay about the allergy alcohol and it is a man of sorry man a body low alcohol and the previous pet taka mano and the thought on a put work it out on a the mana chetelo uh need neon jayse uh sekti man low lead alcoholic alcoholic like it especially so uh i would chepedi kuda ade so naaku kuda alcohol okate allergy kadu naaku chaala allergies unnai gaddi meeda kuchunte naaku rashes vaste kanti nunchi neer kaadadam edu anta modlu avutundi andukani nenu gaddi lo kuchune tappudu chaala suchan suchanal iskuni chusukuni ala kuchuntanu so kani alcohol degiriki vache sariki naaku enduko aa control anedi ledu aa shakti ledu nenu eppudu alcohol మొదలు పెట్టినా ఇంత తాగుతాను అని నిర్ణయించుకుని అంతే తాగే అంత శక్తి లేదు సో ఐదర్ నేను ఒకసారి మొదలు పెట్టాక బ్లాక్ అవుట్ అయిపోయే స్టేజ్ వరకు అయినా వెళ్ళాలి లేదా నా ముందు నుంచి ఎవరైనా ఆల్కహాల్ తీసేసి దాచిపెడితే దాచిపెట్ దాచైనా పెట్టాలి సో సో నేను ఎప్పుడు తాగుడు మొదలు పెట్టినా కూడా మందు అనేది ఎక్కడ పడితే అక్కడ దొరుకుతుంది సో నాకు ఆల్కహాల్ కి కొరత లేదు సో నేను తాగుతూనే ఉండేదాన్ని సో దీనికి అసలు పరిష్కారం ఏంటి అని ఆలోచిస్తే నా నా ప్రాబ్లం వచ్చేసి నేను ఆల్కహాల్ మొదలు పెడితే ఇంకా ఆపలేను మొదలు పెట్టకుండా ఉంటే నేను ఆల్కహాల్ ఎక్కడ తాగాలి ఎప్పుడు తాగాలని ఆలోచిస్తూ ఉంటాను సో దీనికి పరిష్కారం ఏంటి అని అంటే పరిష్కారం వచ్చేసి దీన్ని ఆల్కహాల్ నుంచి దూరంగా ఉండడమే పరిష్కారం అని నాకు ఎప్పుడు అనిపించేది ఏ వచ్చే ముందుకు కూడా నేను చాలా సార్లు నాకు ఆల్కహాల్తో ప్రాబ్లం ఉందని తెలిసి కూడా నేను తాగాను ఎందుకనంటే నాకు ఆల్కహాల్ నుంచి దూరంగా ఎలా ఉండాలో నాకు తెలియదు కాబట్టి ఆ ఆ శక్తి నాలో లేదని నేను నాకు తెలుసు అయినా కూడా నేను తిరిగి వెళ్ళి తాగే తాగేదాన్ని సో చివరి స్టేజ్ చివరి స్టేజెస్కి వచ్చేసరికి నేను అరెస్ట్ అయ్యి నన్ను అరెస్ట్ చేశారు 
హెరెస్ట్ చేసినప్పుడు అప్పుడు మొదటిసారిగా నేను ఆల్కహాల్ నుంచి కొంచెం దూరంగా ఉన్నాను సో అప్పటి వరకు కూడా ఎప్పుడు చూసినా నేను ఆల్కహాల్ మొదలు పెట్టినా కంటిన్యూస్ గా తాగే తాగేదాన్ని అండ్ ఎప్పుడు ఎండ్ అవుద్దో తెలీదు ఈసారి అయినా కొన్ని తక్కువ రోజుల్లో ముగిసిపోతే మంచిది అనే అనే ఉద్దేశంతో నేను భయపడుతూ తాగేదాన్ని సో ఇలాంటి ఇలాంటి స్టేజ్ వరకు నా ఆల్కహాలిజం అనేది స్ప్రెడ్ అయింది సో సో ఆల్కహాల్ నాకు ఇప్పుడు తాగుడుతో ఒక సమస్య ఉంది అని అంటే దాని పరిష్కారం ఏంటి అని అంటే తాగు నుంచి దూరంగా ఉండడమే సో ఇప్పుడు నాకు గడ్డితో అలర్జీ ఉంది అని నేను నాకు తెలిసినప్పుడు గడ్డి నుంచి నేను దూరంగా ఉంటాను సో అదే విధానం నేను తాగుడుతో నాకు సమస్య ఉన్నప్పుడు నేను తాగుడికి కూడా దూ తాగుడి నుంచి కూడా దూరంగా ఉండాలి అని ఆవిడకి తెలిసింది యా కాదు ఎందుకంటే And that's really where my problem begins, right? Because like my experience has shown me like time after time that like once I drink, like I'm going on a spree, I don't know when it's going to end. I don't know who I'm going to hurt. I don't know what trouble I'm going to get into. I just don't know what I'm going to do, right? But I know that I'm going to drink. Um, and that's what it looks like for the last couple of years of my drinking um, until eventually I landed on that nine month spree um where i started and then stayed drunk for nine months like that's how powerful this allergy is um i had no i wanted to stop with everything in my body and just couldn't couldn't seem to um to find the power to do it couldn't stop um and so the question is like if i know that once i start i'm gonna go on a spree right the question is why would i start at all Right. Why would I start knowing what alcohol does to me? Um, like I knew that for a long time before getting sober and I was still not able um, to stay away from it. So like my, my real problem as an alcoholic, right. It's not that once I start drinking, I can't stop. It's that I seemingly continue to drink, right. Even when I don't want to, that right? I pick up a state, I pick up a drink from a sober state of mind. I make a sober, right. I, I pick up a drink from a sober state. state of mind um and i had no idea until coming into alcoholics anonymous and um sitting down with a sponsor that 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 was what was going on with me that like i had completely lost the power to choose like whether or not i was going to drink um i was very clear that once i started drinking i had no power of choice uh but what's maybe even more important right is understanding that like i have no power to choose right my sobriety um because my experience just showed me like i like i missed things like that i wanted to attend because i started drinking like a little bit before i was supposed to go to this other thing and then i would have to i would completely miss it right so like why would i like if all of my experiences showed me that once i start drinking i can't stop why would i continue to start drinking right before stuff that like i actually need to go to right like i'm I missed real opportunities um, because of this. And so it wasn't until like sitting down with a sponsor and, and reading our book, our big book of Alcoholics Anonymous, um, you know, that I became clear that like, I had no power over staying sober. Um, this is why we're all here, right? In Alcoholics Anonymous, like if I just have the choice to just stop drinking and stay away from it, then like I should be long gone from Alcoholics Anonymous. Like I wouldn't, sh I shouldn't need to be here at six years sober, right? Like, oh, the problem's been removed, right? But this problem really centers in my mind. And, and if I understand the, the depths of my alcoholism, like it's not like my first step experience, right? That I'm powerless over alcohol and my life is unmanageable. right? It's my first step experience is not knowing that I can't drink anymore, right? I knew that I couldn't drink and I didn't want to drink too. Like, it's also not even like just wanting to be sober, right? It's like, like I knew that I couldn't drink, right? The depth of my step one experience, right? Is knowing that like, I'm going to drink again, right? And whether I want to or not has nothing to do with it. right? Because I wanted to be sober and I found myself picking up a drink. 
um, that's the depth of our powerlessness. You know, there's, there's not any hope in our step one. If we take our step one apart from the rest of the steps, like the step one is not hopeful, right? I'm truly powerless over alcohol and my life is unmanageable. And what that really means, right, is like, I don't have the power to keep myself sober, right? And if, I don't know, like, you, I may encourage you just to look at your own experience and ask yourself that, like, have you had periods of sobriety before, right? It's like, why would I continue to pick up a drink from that sober state of mind if I'm good? You know what I mean? Knowing what's going to happen to me, like, like alcoholics are, we're, you know, this disease is insane. It's really remarkable, like to watch it and it's just to watch it in others. And it's easier for me to see it in others than in myself, but it's pretty remarkable to see um, the way this thing manifests, right? Because we will have everything going for us, right? And all we need to do is stay sober and somehow we get drunk. You know, like if it's like, no, there's no amount of consequences for someone like me to keep me sober. It's not about, um, you know, my partner threatening to leave me or getting kicked out of school or losing my driver's license or my family wanting nothing to do with me. Like those are all serious consequences that I don't want to happen. And all those people want in my life is for me to be sober. And I, for some reason, can't seem to do it, right? Even though I want to. Um, I'll stop there. So, our chapter is the same thing. I have to say that 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 I have to say అయినా కూడా ఇప్పుడు అర్థమైనా కూడా నేను ఇంత జ్ఞానంతో కూడా నేను ఎప్పుడు తాగు నుంచి దూరంగా ఉండలేకపోయాను నేను అప్పటి వరకు ఆల్కహాలిక్స్ అనానిమస్ లోకి వచ్చి ఒక స్పాన్సర్ తో కూర్చుని మన బిగ్ బుక్ చదవడం ఇవన్నీ చేసినప్పుడే నా మొదటి సోపానం అర్థమైంది నాకు అండ్ మొదటి సోపానం ఏం చెప్తుంది అని అంటే నేను తిరిగి మళ్ళీ ఎప్పుడు తాగలేను నేను మొదటి సోపానంలో కూడా అదే అర్థం చేసుకుంది నేను తిరిగి ఎప్పుడు తాగలేను అయినా కూడా నే నన్ను నా జబ్బు మళ్ళీ తాగుడు వైపే తీసుకెళ్తుంది సో నేను మొదటి సోపాను విజయం గురించి కాదు అది ఒక ఓటమిని అంగీకరించి అంగీకారం అంగీకరించడం గురించి ఏం ఓటమి అని అంటే నేను మళ్ళీ తిరిగి తాగలేను తాగితే మళ్ళీ ఆపలేను ఇది సో తాగుడు మీద నేను ఎంత తాగుతాను ఎప్పుడు తాగుతాను అనే ఆ శక్తి నాలో లేదు ఆ నిర్ణయించుకునే శక్తి నాలో లేదు సో ఆ నిర్ణయించుకునే శక్తి నాలో లేదు అని గ్రహించడమే ఈ మొదటి సోపానం నాకు నేర్పింది కానీ నేను నా జీవితం మొత్తం నేను ముందు చూసుకున్నా కూడా మీరు కూడా మీ జీవితంలో తిరిగి చూసుకోండి మీరు కొన్నాళ్ళు సోబర్ గా ఉన్నా కూడా మళ్ళీ తిరిగి ఎందుకు తాగారు దాని తాగితే వచ్చే పరిణామాలు మనకి క్లియర్ గా తెలిసినప్పుడు కూడా మనం మళ్ళీ వెళ్ళి ఎందుకు తాగాం తాగితే ఇప్పుడు నా జీవిత భాగస్వాములు నన్ను వదిలేసి వెళ్ళిపోతారు నా కుటుంబం నన్ను వదిలేస్తుంది నాకు ఉద్యోగం పోతుంది నాకు డ్రైవర్స్ లైసెన్స్ పోతుంది ఇవన్నీ భయాలు ఉన్నా కూడా నేను తిరిగి మళ్ళీ ఎందుకు వెళ్ళి తాగాను అదే నా అప్పుడు నాకు అర్థమైంది ఏంటి అని అంటే ఇది ఫిజికల్ అలర్జీ ఒక్కటే కాదు భౌతిక అలర్జీ ఒక్కటే కాదు ఇది ఒక మానసిక వ్యామోహం కూడా సో నేను సోబర్ గా ఉన్నా కూడా నేను మళ్ళీ తిరిగి తాగడానికే నా నా మెదడు నన్ను అక్కడ తీసుకెళ్తుంది సో దీనికి పరిష్కారం ఏంటి అని అంటే ఈ పరిష్కారం ఈ యొక్క సోపానాలు ప్రాక్టీస్ చేయడం ఈ ప్రోగ్రామ్ చేయడం సో నేను స్పాన్సర్ తో కూర్చుని ఎప్పుడైతే ఈ సోపానాలు చేశాను బిగ్ బుక్ చదివి మొదటి సోపానం అప్పుడు నాకు అర్థమైంది అర్థమయ్యాక నాలో ఆ శక్తి లేదు నేను ఎప్పుడు తాగుతాను ఎప్పుడు తాగను అని నిందించుకునే శక్తి నాలో లేదు అని నేను గ్రహించాను అది గ్రహించిన తర్వాత నేను ఎప్పుడు సోబర్ అవుతానని చెప్పడానికి కూడా నాలో ఆ శక్తి లేదు అది అది కూడా నేను తెలుసుకున్నాను సో దాని ఒక పరిణామాలు నాకు తాగితే వచ్చే పరిణామాలు ఎంత తీవ్రంగా ఉంటాయని తెలిసినా కూడా నేను తిరిగి ఎందుకు తాగుతున్నాను అని అంటే దాని జవాబు అదే నేను నా స్వతహాగా నా నా శక్తితో నేను తాగుడికి దూరంగా ఉండలేను నాకు సహాయం కావాలి అని ఆవిడికి అర్థమైంది Yeah, so there's no hope in step one, right? Like, because if, right, if I understand the depths of my step one, it's that I'm going to drink again. And whether I want to or not, it doesn't matter. Um, and, uh, sorry. 
Um, yeah, so there's, there's uh, yeah, not a lot of hope in my step one. Um, and if that's like, sorry, I'm just a little distracted. Do you, could he be muted, you think? And there go the sirens. Okay, forgive my mind. I'm like easily distracted by stimuli, <laughs> apparently. Okay, uh, let me get back to what I was saying. Um, okay, yeah. So there's not there's not a lot of hope in step one. Um, and so I don't know. And I think the reason why I'm talking about step one so much is like I really believe it might be our most important step, right? Because if I don't understand the depths of my powerlessness, like there's no way that I'm going to do um, the 12 steps as they're outlined in our big book. Um, it's a lot, right? Like this program asks a lot of me, right? It asks me to be um, entirely honest. It asks me to um, like, even about the things that I swore I would never tell another human being right the stuff that I was going to take to my grave like that's the stuff it's requiring me to be honest about right we're, we're I'm required to live an honest lifestyle like I'm required to make amends to everyone that I've harmed you know I'm um required to live a lifestyle of service right to uh, to others sorry there's the dog <laughs> um right I'm required to live a lifestyle of service um, it's a lot, right? It's a lot. And, and my experience is that doing this by any kind of virtue, like, oh, it's the right thing to do, or everybody should be honest, like, that's not going to work for someone like me, right? Because what will happen is I'll do some of it, and I'll feel good about myself, because I've done a little bit of work, and I won't finish it. Right. And what the real, what the real situation is for me is that like, I'm a real alcoholic. Right. And what that means is apart from a spiritual solution, a spiritual solution, like I'm going to drink again. Um, I'm powerless over alcohol. I'm powerless over alcohol. And, and alcohol gave me real power, right? That night in high school at that party, I completely transformed from the inside out, from someone who was afraid of everyone and everything to being to someone who was like just comfortable in their own skin. Um, I was completely changed by alcohol. And so now that the alcohol has been removed, I'm just left powerless, right? And then and left my own devices, like I will, I will go back to alcohol, whether I want to or not. Um, so if I'm having this step one experience, right, and I understand the depth of my alcoholism, and I know that no matter what I do, I still end up drunk. Um, the only place for me to turn to is to Alcoholics Anonymous and this spiritual solution, right? Like this program encourages us um, to find a power that we can live by, um, right? It's a spiritual program, uh, not a religious one. Although you'll, if you are a religious person, you'll find that it's compatible, right? With this program um, requires us like to live by spiritual principles. Um, so why someone like me cannot afford to be dishonest? right? Um, why I must live a lifestyle of service. Um, you know, why I have to go out and make, make amends where I've caused harm, right? Those are all things that I do because I'm a real alcoholic. Um, and I desperately, desperately need to find a relationship with a power greater than myself. And that power cannot be alcohol anymore. Right. It can't be alcohol anymore. It's my experience. If alcohol is still working for you, then go, you know what I mean? Nobody, nobody was here to convince me um, that I was an alcoholic and nobody here was con to convince me. Nobody in Alcoholics Anonymous was begging me to stop drinking. It's not, they don't care. <laughs> right? It's like, if you don't want to stop drinking like that is okay. You know what I mean? Like, I'm, I'm not here to tell you that you are an alcoholic. Um, but if you really do want to stop drinking um, and you're finding that you're having a really hard time doing that like you may belong here <laughs> right you may be one of us and that is awesome right that's a beautiful thing um because there's a real solution for that right it's in that like deep deep hopelessness that like we actually can find hope because that's where the rest of the program comes in um these are our, we have 12 steps and they're designed to connect us to a new power right, to provide us with the spiritual experience, right, and a relationship with, with a God of our understanding of how you understand God, um, so that we can live sober, 
I'll stop there. So, Nenu Moditi Sopanam Gurin Shinta Induku Noki Cheptanana Ante, Moditi Sopanan Lo Mano Manamana Otamin Eprete, Angika is the Manaki Tagunin Staguru made the Manik Sectile than Man Eprete Angika is the Manam Bada Hindula and Eprete Angika is the Manu Apre Sober Augal Tavana or Cheptaner. And Mita Sopana Lo Anni Mano practice Cheali and Ante. Mana I Modati Sopana Vanedi uh uh Chala Gatiga uh Namali. And uh uh Man Telskodam Okate Kadu Kani Angi Karin Chale. Mano uh e Manaki Tagurta Samasyundi, Manaki Mana Chetulo, Mana uh Mana Mana Sekti Dwara Mano Tagur Tagu Napale, Ani Mano uh Purtiga Angi Karin Shnapude, Mano Sober Augal Tavan our Chipana. And uh uh Kani Ipri Alcoholics Anonymous Maniki Icha Adyatmika programu Kani Adyatmika programu Manikendu Kantavasro Nalanti Vektitona Amaku in the Nijayati Gondam in the Kausro, Oka sponsor in the Kausro, and the Iterilki Sahai Padda in the Kausro. Ivani Ologiste, my program Nanunchi Chalani Arutun. Kani, Indu Kadutundi and Ante, Manoka, Ye alcohol and a Mandaite, Erete Padarda Undo, Nako Sakthin Ichinde, Nako Jiltani, Narpuntunde Dani, Danikin, Nalo, Ipuru Sakthunde Rigad. So alcohol Dwaran in a Sekti Punde. So Ipu alcohol thesis Serki Pun in Mali, Sekti Hindra Lipe and Kada. So Ipu Anduke Man program Unko Kunatama in a Sekti, alcohol Kakunda, Mandu Kakunda, Unko Kunatama in a Sektini, Inchkoman Indu Karege then Ante. Ipu alcohol monkey Sektiniche, Mandu Manki Durama in a Pudu, Mankunko Sekti Kava. So Anduke Manali, Unko Kunatama in a Sektini, Inchkuni, Adiatmika principles Dwara, Mano e program which is to Manjitani, Narpinchkomani, Anduke Jepter. Idi Mataparamina program Kadu, Adiatmika in a program. So Andukin and Epudu on Nijaiti Gondali, Abadal Chapakordu, Etheril Kavana Hani Jaste, you know, Shamapan Jeppi, Avani Sadidu Goli. Ivani and Cheste, Nenu, Apu Bagwan Turkey, the Girautuntan. Na Panindu Sopanala uh uh Najutana Nenu Epraite uh uh use lo pertano, Nenu Apude, Nenu a Bhagwan to Nenu Unko Kunatama in a secti, Bhagwan to the Greek Nenu the Girautunta. Ah secti na no sober gonstundi. So Anduke uh Modati Sopano Chala uh important chala mukyo in the kante. A modest soap on the Manepurate, Mano Otomani Purti Angi Karistamo, a put him on Mundu Kalagalto. So Adi Aru Chipner. Yeah, Carl, please come. Thanks. Um, so, yeah, we have this spiritual solution here in Alcoholics Anonymous, um, and it's the 12 steps, you know, and, um, you know, like I said, it is, it's a tall order, it's a, it's a lot to ask of someone um, in my experiences, like, and what I've seen um, is that, and it, you know, and what it says in our book is that like, you know, doing this halfway avails me nothing, right? Half measures avail us nothing. Um, and what that means is like only doing some of it, right? leaves me in a position where I'm vulnerable to a drink again, right? Where, where I'm liable to drink again. Um, because I didn't complete and, and commit, um, to this 12 step life. Um, so I, uh, what happened to me was, um, I was drunk for nine months and I drove drunk every day and uh, I was eventually arrested for the drunk driving and, you know, I emerged in a psychiatric hospital where they, oh, I, I, yeah, I just left out a huge detail. Sorry. So I was, um, yeah, I was suicidal, uh, for months in that time, you know, I was drinking all the time and I didn't, I didn't want to live anymore. And, um, really like, I just didn't want to drink anymore. And I didn't think that it would be possible for someone like me to ever be sober. Um, because I was trying really hard with everything that I had to be sober and I couldn't seem to do it. Uh, and so I come to the conclusion that 
you know, for me, sobriety is impossible um, and that I should just take my own life. And I'm driving drunk like I do every day and I eventually get arrested. And, you know, following that event, I, you know, went home and, and tried to take my own life. And my mom came upstairs and found me and I was rushed to the emergency room. And that's where I detoxed from alcohol. You know, I was, uh, was in pretty rough shape, <laughs> right? Coming to Alcoholics Anonymous, I did not come here on a winning streak. Like, I don't know. I don't believe any of us do. If you do, then you might be in the wrong place, right? Like this was not, no virtue in coming to Alcoholics Anonymous. And it wasn't until I was um, in that psychiatric hospital that uh, they brought in meetings of Alcoholics Anonymous. And that's where I attended my first meeting was there. And I never even made a decision to do that. Like the meeting just started, the meeting just came and they started setting up like in the room that I already was in. Like I never even made a choice to go to that meeting. I just sat there and the meeting formed around me and on my state and I listened and, you know, I got, I went to a couple other institutions after that and a, a sober living house. And, um, you know, I eventually was, was met with a sponsor there, uh, who was willing to take me through this work. And she understood that, that we were engaged on a life and death errand, right? And this, this really was about like getting unblocked from this power um, as really as quickly as possible um, so that I can get out there. And like, really, she was really so heavy on service. Like she, she encouraged me um, to, to help others. And, and I got so fired up for Alcoholics Anonymous um, in my first year of sobriety, I um, yeah, she really showed me her how to, she showed me like Alcoholics Anonymous and like I developed like this enthusiasm for it, like as a result of these 12 steps, you know, um, you know, and it says in our book that this is very, this is a simple program, right, but it's not easy. I think I've, I think I've tried to emphasize that tonight, but like this program will ask you to do stuff that's like really hard right? Like going up to people that you've harmed um, and telling them the truth, right? Or like paying back money that you owe um, or, you know, I mean, I've, I've really had like a powerful experience with amends and telling people the truth about the way that I showed up in their lives and um, the harms that I see, like, that's a really, really hard thing to do. Um, but it's in my experience, entirely necessary. Right. And like, that's where the freedom is um, in these 12 steps. It's like doing the stuff that like is so hard that like, I didn't even think would be possible for someone like me to do. Um, and, and finding that I'm able to walk through it and, and doing these things that I'm terrified of building this relationship with this power that, um, that really just, that I believe for me, like wants me to be free. Um, and all these harms that I'm carrying around and these secrets that I have and, you know, the guilt of harms done and, and, uh, um, and the ability to live this like service driven life where like my main object is to be helpful to other people like, like that leaves me in a place that's like so much more comfortable in sobriety than, than I thought would have been possible for me. Um, yeah, let's stop there. Yeah, so our interpretante, our Tagudu, Apal in a sticky watch in a stage varku, Tomade in Avil Ninchi continues the Tagutune on Naru, Tagi drive just to work a Keleva Ritlaga. Atlantis Samyon Loksari Avaki, our arrest code air. Dan Tarvata, Inca Avadi sober under an innocent lantern of Aluk and Mali Mali Taga Valley. So Danvala our came at the main ante, Nenu sober Gaitan, a Jutun lepud under Leno. So when I put na 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 atma atma chase kuni na chanpoor mein correcto. Itla na kuni aavde atma atya chase kunar kora. Prayatna kor chase kunar. Apuru wal mother wal aavni hospitalo ki petna apuru psychiatric ward lo treatment kora pondar aavde. Akar treatment tis kuna apuru apure first time aavde alcohol ni chuduranga onni tan jergindi detox ani jergindi aavde. A detox and a psychiatric center lone, alcoholics anonymous meeting Lukoda, Pradam Chaser out. A Chase Napru, Unco Cavide, Avaki sponsor governor. Avadi is a sopana, Livani, a chapin cheru. 
చేయించి ఆవిడ బాగా చెప్పింది ఏంటి అని అంటే మనం ఇతరులకి సహాయపడాలి ఇతరులకి ఎంత మనం సహాయపడితే మనం అంత ఈ జబ్బుకి దూరంగా ఉంటాం అవే కాకుండా ఈ సోపానాలు కూడా మనం పూర్తిగా చేయాలి మనం ఎవరికైతే హానులు చేసామో వాళ్ళ నుంచి వాళ్ళకి క్షమాపణ చెప్పి చెప్పి దానికి మనం ఏం చేయాలో అవి చేయాలి ఎవరి దగ్గర అయితే డబ్బులు దోచుకున్నామో వాళ్ళకి తిరిగి డబ్బులు ఇవ్వాలి ఎవరి దగ్గర అయితే అప్పులు చేసామో తిరిగి వాళ్ళకి అప్పులు తీర్చాలి ఇవన్నీ చేయడం చాలా కష్టమైనవి నేను జీవితంలో ఏవైతే దారుణాలు చేశానో ఎవరికి చెప్పకూడదు అనుకున్నాను అవి నేను చెప్పాల్సిన స్థితికి వచ్చాను అండ్ అవి చె అవి చాలా కష్టమైన పనులు చేయడం కానీ నేను అది ఎప్పుడైతే చేశానో నాకు నేను ఎప్పుడైతే ఒక ఉన్నతమైన శక్తిని నమ్మి అవన్నీ పనులు అవన్నీ చేశానో నా నమ్మకం పెరిగింది నేను తాగు నుంచి దూరంగా కూడా ఉన్నాను ఒక కొత్త అనుభవం వచ్చింది నాకు జీవితం నుంచి నేను ఎవరికైతే ఎంత హాని చేశానో హానులు అవన్నీ చూసి నేను ఎప్పుడైతే వాళ్ళు క్షమాపణలు చెప్పానో నాకు ఒక నిజంగా ఒక లోపల ఒక ఆధ్యాత్మికంగా ఒక అనుభవం కలిగింది ఆధ్యాత్మిక చైతన్యం అంటారు అదే నాకు నాలో కలిగింది సో ఇది ఇవన్నీ నేను చేయడం ప్రారంభం చేసినప్పుడు నాలో తాగుడు నుంచి తాగాల్సిన అవసరం వెళ్ళిపోయింది నాకు తాగాలనే కోరిక కూడా వెళ్ళిపోయింది సో అదే ఆవిడ చెప్తున్నారు ప్లీజ్ కంటిన్యూ So I was um, met with this woman uh, in the sober house who was my sponsor. Um, and, you know, the first thing we did together is we opened the big book. Actually, the first thing we did together was she asked me to meditate. Um, and I was not excited about that. <laughs> I really hated meditation. There was a time... When I was in rehab, um, after I went to that psychiatric hospital, I went to a 28 day rehab and, uh, they asked us to meditate. And I remember I just sat on the, you know, in the middle of the floor, they were like, they told us to, and I sat quietly and like all of the thoughts and the things that I had just done. And like, you know, I told you what life is like for me sober. It's just constantly, it's my mind, like constantly spinning thoughts and constantly beating me up. So that's like, I'm sitting there on the carpet. Um, and my mind just starts going back to like the DUI that I just got, the job that I walked out on, like, how am I ever going to face these people again? Right. My head is just so loud. And I was like, this is awful. I nearly like freaked out, like nearly had a panic attack, like as a result of this 10 minute meditation. And I was like, I am never doing that again. Like that was terrible. Um, and then I sat down with my sponsor um, and she was like, let's meditate. And I just didn't have the heart to argue with her. And I, for some reason, trusted this woman any way more than I did any of the professionals at the rehab. Um, I, I trusted this woman way more than them. Um, and, and I know now it's because she understood me, right? Like she's a real alcoholic, just like me. And um, what we have here is, uh, you know, is very, it's, is unique, right? It's unique to 12 step programs. Like an Alcoholics Anonymous was the first one. Right, that like alcohol, like we need each other, right? That like it wasn't until like I sat down with another alcoholic, right, who suffered from my from what I suffered from and had the solution to it that like I was able to get better. Right. And like I had talked to a lot of professionals <laughs> about me, right? I had seen psychiatrists, I had seen therapists, I had tried um eating healthy, I had tried um more exercise, I you know. I was trying these means of, um, you know, I tried like going out with my friends, like spending more time with them. Like uh, I always, you know, I had a full-time job. Like I had all the things that like, you know, should make up like a healthy person. Um, but none of those people were able to, able to help me. Uh, it wasn't until I sat down with another alcoholic, right? That first I was able to ever be honest. Like I couldn't be honest with any of those people, but it wasn't until I sat down with an alcoholic um, that who was honest with me, like she shared with me her story and like, it gave me permission to be honest about mine. Um, and it created this environment where like, I could be honest with her. It was totally remarkable. Um, when I sat down with her and, and we, <laughs> she's like, let's meditate. I'm like, okay. Even though I really don't want to. Um, and I do. And, and she really, like, she showed me like how to meditate, like still like what I go back to is like the experiences with her early on of just sitting quietly and like watching my thoughts go by. Um, 
and sometimes listening to them and sometimes writing them down just in case they might be good. Uh, but, and we opened the book and we read the doctor's opinion, right? And that's when I learned about what I suffered from, like what, I, what I've hoped to have shared with you tonight about that I have a physical allergy um, to alcohol once I start, I can't stop. And, and that it's, I have this mental obsession to that. Like, even when I want to be sober, I can't seem to not, I can't, I can't, I can't seem to not drink. Right. I can't seem to stay sober even when I want to. Um, here comes the dog. <laughs> and, um, you know, we went through the book, um, except for the meditation, I guess, like she kind of set me up with step 11 right away. She had me doing practices of step 11 right away um, and parts of step 12 too. She had me doing right away. Uh, I wasn't necessarily like sponsoring other people right away, but she was telling me that I needed to be of service and that I needed to find other people to help. And the more helping I could do, the better, because it would help me get out of my mind. And um, I was living in this sober house with all these girls and you know, I would, I would like do their chore for them. Right. Or, um, you know, there's so many, if you've ever lived in an institution like that, um, you know, there's plenty of people who are, <laughs> who are suffering and need help. So I would try to be like a listening ear, uh, to those people, um, in the house where I was living and, um, tried to start doing things that I wouldn't normally do, like, which would be like calling my mom, and like asking her about like how she's doing, you know, I was so selfish with my relationship with my mom for, for most of my life. Like my mom was there to clean up my messes and, you know, I would start to call her and just ask her about her instead of talk about all the drama going on with me. Um, I started doing those things right away, but other than that, you know, I started, we went through the steps in order um, and each one is designed to put me in a position where um, I can do the next one, right? Because I can't do step two without a step one, right? None of this matters without step one, by the way, like none of it. Like I, and if I'm really balking, right? If I get to a step where I'm balking and I'm like, I really don't want to do this one. I don't believe, like if I get to my inventory or fourth step um, and I'm like, I don't want to write it, right? It's not a fourth step problem, right? It goes back to my first step. Right? I, don't know, I really don't know anybody who's like, I can't wait to write my inventory and I'm so excited about it. Like, I thought I, I thought I was unique in that, like, I didn't want to do it, right? I don't want to, like, it's hard and it's scary. Um, but it really goes back to my first step. And I had these really gentle and like strong sponsors that would just tell me like, Caroline, like, it's just not optional. Like, do you want to drink again? And I was like, no. And I was like, all right, like, I guess I'm going to write an inventory then, you know? And like, that's what's propelled me through this work is like, I don't want to drink again, you know? And the cool thing is, is if I'm willing to just do this stuff that I really, really don't want to do, um, I reap the benefits of it, right? Which is that I get to live in a, a life that it's much more peaceful, a life where I have relationships with my family that are honest, um, you know, a life that, you know, I, I show up for, um, you know, I've been able to go back to school as a result of this program. Like, and I've, I've stayed in the middle of Alcoholics Anonymous the whole time. I've always sponsored a bunch of people. Um, I've always gone to a lot of meetings and um, I ended up going back to school and, and you know, getting a, a graduate degree and um, in this career that like, I know I'm supposed to be in. Um, and all of that is a result of Alcoholics Anonymous, right? Like if I don't, if I don't have you guys, like I don't have anything, right? Because without you guys, I don't, I don't stay sober. Um, and when, if I'm not sober, like it's pretty, like my experience shows me where my life takes me, right? My life takes me to drive, drive and drunk every day, uh, for months and, and with suicidal ideation and then also suicidal action, right? Like that's, that's where my, um, that's my alcoholism. I desperately, desperately need you guys. Um, and because of this, uh, you know, this program, my life is, is remarkable. Like it really is like, it's really, really beautiful. And it, it doesn't mean that like, I feel like happy all the time. Um, that's not true. You know, like there's definitely things that I still struggle with and I still have, um, you know, fear, and I find myself afraid and in many situations, like I have these spiritual tools um, that I turn to now, right? I'm not just turning to a drink anymore. And the, the fear is a lot better 
than it used to be. I will say that like, it's a lot better than it used to be, but it like, it's still there. Um, and I, and I have these spiritual tools, um, and I'm very grateful to all of you. And I want to, I want to thank you for having me. And I think I will end my share there. Yep. So I would end up my Randy first to, uh, our sponsor, uh, these Kunaka, I would first consume meditation, start gym and check around. Kantin Kassalu meditation and Edi as Lishtaman in the Kadu. So itla Oxer could rehab loan up with meditation, Jake Chavalo. So I could rehab loan meditation Oxer Chase Napu, Padrim Shallo, meditation Chase Napu, Audi, Emate Darnal Jesaro, Emate Tagis Bandinar Pudom, Emate Tagesi, Eris Taudom, Intlaval to Samasalu, Tagesi Chase Nadarna, Livani Gurtukochi, our Chala Baranga Pilate. So, I have a meditation and I have a constant thought. 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 I have in the country, Audi, Audi Kor Nalanti, Samasuna Vade, Audi Kor Taur Samasundi, Nalagna Taur, the Badapadi, Alcoholics Anonymous Lococher, he program chases over a year. So Andukani, Audiki, Nenu, Ardamayan, Audi, 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 Chepe, the Ardan Chesco Galton Dowdy, Audi Nal Chepe, Nenu, Ardan Chesco Galton, Mede the Bashla Matlar, no, a Bash Maitre Kardamotundi. In Enno Therapil Jason, no psychiatrist there Kellano, no doctor there Kellano. No therapist in there, Kellano, Munchi Aharan Tinanu, Vyayaman Jesano, Snaithil to bite Keladani, and Ni Tri Jason, a Tagu Durang on the Danki. Kani Tagu Nishapun and Durang on the leg pain. Nenu Iprete Unko Itra Tagu Bot to Kuchini, and Abadan and Jepkuni, while Jepe Paridamal, while Jepe solution in Iprete part in Chano, Apudin and Sober Gondakal. Apudena Gardu in the Indian Okatagabot and Koktagabot is high particle town. So Avdi Avdu Kuchin and meditation chase Napuru, Sloga, Nenu, Nakoche, Olachanlu, Chalapadai, Nemadiga, Nemadaudan Startayano. So now Olachanlu Nenu tells Kodun start Jason. And Avdu Kuchin, Neprete, Sopanal practice Jasono, a Sopanal Kodan at Chala Sahipadai. Kana Anit Kante Mukyo uh are then Adan Jes calls in the Indianante uh na moduti sopano nenu a purti angi karin sali. E Arakoraga Nenu e program a practice chaleno. Arakoraga Epurate Chastano, Neno na pro uh Taurki Durangona and Mali future lepro kapreli tage uh tagadanka uh uh taru uh avakasam create chase nate out. So Arakoraga and Epudu uh Purtiga practice chaleno. Uh, program. Purti ka nijayati to nai program ni practice chayali. And uh, e program lo unna sopa nalu okati tarawat okati chesto undali. So endu ka nante na modati sopa nam purta yakni nai rendo sopa nai ki tayar chest nai nandu. So rendo sopa nau uh, purta ite nai nai mudo sopa nai ki tayar chesto mudo sopa nai pumpto nai. So andu ka nai sopa nau sopa nau complete chest oka sopa nai tarawat unko sopa nai ki na sponsor zaha karan to nai mundu kella. So, na sponsor and Kokati Nak Baga Alava chase in the Indiante, Ithril Kisai Paddo. Alcoholics Ithril Thagbotl Kisai Paddo. Nalaga Samasya Unna Thagbot Landerkin and Sai Paddo chase and Danwal and Chala Vimukti Kalyan. Adokate Kadu, Inclo Amakin and Call Jesse, Elaun the Avdi Rojala Jerigindi and in Tilskodo. In the Kanente, I Naku Najitan Lord Enno Jesse. Then Tagun in the Samasilu Partuna Pranta, Avinaku Sahakar Padaru, Naka Samasinch Bite Tis Kundad and Kento Sahai Padaru. So Kana Avikin in a put three chase in the Jutan Lane Lay. Kani program Lokochi and sponsored the Matla Napre in our Kena three, he wouldn't start Jason. Namano Samandal Bog Badai Nenu Ere the Ujogum Udle Socheno, Ere the drive Tagutu drive chess to Arestayano. Ilanti situations even in Elaga, Edrukunta and Bayunto Nedan. Can Alcoholics Anonymous, E program, a sponsor, Nako Margan Chupitcher. A Margan Ninchen in Vilandani, Okamanchi, Mano Samandalu, 
నిజాయితీతో బ్రతుకుతున్నాను మంచి మానవ సంబంధాలు ఏర్పరచుకున్నాను చాలా మందికి సహాయపడగలుగుతున్నాను చాలా అండ్ ఈ ఇది ఈ ప్రోగ్రామ్ చేస్తూ వీరే వాళ్ళకి సహాయపడుతున్నప్పుడల్లా నేను చాలా ప్రశాంతంగా ఉంటున్నాను నా జీవితంలో ఎప్పుడు అనుభవించినంత ప్రశాంతత అనుభవిస్తున్నాను కానీ ఈ జీ ఇరవై నాలుగు గంటలు నేను ఇంత ప్రశాంతంగా ఉంటానా అంటే లేదు నాకు బాధలు వస్తాయి నాకు భయాలు వస్తాయి సంతోషం వస్తుంది దుఃఖం కూడా వస్తుంది కానీ ఆ అన్ని ఫీలింగ్స్ ని నేను ఎదుర్కొనే శక్తి నాకు ఈ ప్రోగ్రామ్ ఇస్తుంది నాకు ఎప్పుడైనా బాధ వస్తే నేను ఇతరులతో పంచుకోగలుగుతాను సంతోషం వచ్చినా పంచుకోగలుగుతాను ఇతరుల వల్ల ఇతరుల వల్ల వచ్చే సంతోషాన్ని కూడా నేను అనుభవించగలుగుతున్నాను సో అది నాకు ఆల్కహాలిక్స్ అనోనిమస్ అని ఇచ్చి ఆల్కహాలిక్స్ అనోనిమస్ ఇచ్చింది సో ఇప్పుడు మీరు అందరితో నేను ఇప్పుడు పంచుకోవడం కూడా నాకు చాలా సంతోషం ఇస్తుంది అండ్ సో ఈ సోపానాలు ప్రాక్టీస్ చేసి నేను స్పాన్సర్తో ఈ ప్రోగ్రామ్ చేసినప్పుడు ఇతరులకు పంచుతూ ఇంకా మిగతా వాళ్ళందరితో నేను నిజాయితీగా ఉండి ప్రేమతో ఉండి అలా ఉంటుంటే నా జీవితం చాలా సుఖమయంగా ఉంది చాలా ప్రశాంతంతో ప్రశాంతతతో ఉన్నాను సో ఈ అవకాశం ఇచ్చిన మీరందరికీ నేను చాలా కృతజ్ఞులు అని ఆవిడ తెలియపరుచుకుంటున్నారండి అలాగే ఆవిడ షేరింగ్ ముగించారు యా థ్యాంక్ యూ సో మచ్ క్యారలిన్ వాజ్ వండర్ఫుల్ యా కార్తిక్ యూ లైక్ టు టేక్ ఓవర్ ఫ్రమ్ హియర్ I'll end the recording.